So, okay, so um, I sort of got this video fixed for now, uh, but I don't know. This shit's still, still all messed up. My computer life. Ugh. Anyways, um, there's worse problems in the world, right? Um, so uh, here we are on uh, week eight. I made a few d things I have already discussed in my um, one uh, voice lecture that I give uh, for this week, and the rest are documentaries that I've lined up. So I, I already in that video explained a lot of uh, the kind of background of or the idea of what's going on this week. So make sure you watch that entirely, um, even though it's just me talking to looking at the map. I do say things that are relevant to this week. And um, uh, what else was I going to say? Okay, yeah, so you'll notice that the assignments are just a little different. What you may notice and you might like is that we have no writing assignments this week. You just do the notes and you do the discussions. Uh, I would like you to give me some quality notes. Um, really show me that you're watching thoroughly these documentary uh, pieces. You will find yourself, as I mentioned in my um, short lecture clip, a little disturbed, perplexed by some of the stuff that you're going to be exposed to for the next two weeks. Um, but I think that you will also find yourself extremely enlightened. And you will be getting a, a, a broader uh, taste or view of the world. Um, I might through this week post you some other things there there are so many things going on that I want you guys to get more exposure to um, and I just kind of want to address something that I addressed in my my lecture but to just kind of make a little more uh, discussion uh, uh, points on and that is bias in media sources and um, what to do with those okay so um, I, I, you know, as we're ending the semester, I might be getting you into like to have a strong interest in many topics that <clears throat> you are going to see many other links uh, on um, YouTube uh, accounts, and you're going to look to sources that uh, may or may not be reliable. Now, I talked about the issue of bias, and yes, there are many, many. Uh, that all have their bias. The problem gets even worse though is when uh, you're talking about inaccurate information or information really driving very little credible sources um, to it. Now how does one, you know, what, what does one do to actually like know if you are having a reliable source or not? Um, I just kind of want to point out a little bit of, uh, of this for you. Um, what I try to do is this, is one, can you trace the source? Two, do you find that there's other sources, other uh, sites available that talk about the same subject and there seems to be a consensus point of view? In other words, something that you're, you're talking about has other sources that are known for being uh, credible in some way and the information turns out to all say the same thing. Okay, so... Um, you know, we uh, find that certain forms of information are, um, there, that there's more agreement upon and others become, other, other topics become more debated. So for example, everyone for the most part agrees that the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor or that the United States was attacked at 9-11. But you'll see a lot of different topics on why that was the case what the government knew and so on and so that that then it becomes more uh, you know challenging in terms of your sources because you have a lot more debate about those things um i i think what you know how how i feel is 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 what's it's good to point out is that the internet while it gives us a lot of garbage we can research things and um you know kind of debate or look at sources and, and check things out so for example wikipedia I, I refer to it a lot mainly because you do have links where you can go and find sources and see if that is a more credible argument or not 
Uh, I don't take Wikipedia as the final word, but it's not as bad as people think in the sense that you do have, it does ground you in places you can at least look and check out the source, okay? Um, when it comes to things like uh, uh, propaganda from other governments, I think what's great about that is that you at least see their perspective. So I show RTC, Putin has his own def definite thoughts about the world compared to the United States. But since he is a world player and since Russia is a world player and Russia is involved, I don't think it hurts for us to understand things through the lens of um, the Russians. Now, it doesn't mean that we say, oh my gosh, Russian TV is totally telling the truth and our television is totally telling falsehood. The fact of the matter is, um, you know, we're seeing that each person, each group tries to articulate a certain position to justify what it's doing. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, what I just want to also point out is that the Democrats and Republicans in the United States, when it comes to foreign policy, don't conflict with each other as much as they like to make it appear. And I hope that you will take some sort of time to research this and really discover that point. Um, Hillary Clinton, for example, on her foreign policy, has very much been in line with what we would call war hawks. Okay? Um, and, you know, Bill Clinton w did a lot of war. Obama has been involved in a lot of war. Republicans have been involved in a lot of war. We have a strong imperial nation that has a very real presence in the world, and it's not different when we have a Democrat or Republican. Now, there are different philosophies that have come out of different branches of, 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 of groups within our government that push for a type of agenda do we send more weapons? Do we not send weapons? Do we send troops? Do we not send troops? Do we prop up a certain leader? Do we help overthrow a certain leader? But all of these discussions are based on the fact that the United States assumes itself the right to get involved in other parts of the world and to take a leading role. And that is taking place again from the Democratic and the Republican side. And you really see this heavily take place within Africa and the Middle East. And we did learn a lot how much it took place within Latin America and so I just kind of want you to have that perspective I'm, I'm not trying to actually at, in, in this point push a particular idea of what you think you should have about it but you should be aware of that and I would challenge anybody you know for, if anybody tells me that they're that different Democrats and Republicans on the legacy of US foreign policy please show me a source again you know there are different methods you know Obama is accused of how he's handled Syria. It's not quite clear to me how different a Republican would be doing that. And ultimately, still both Republicans and, and Democrats think that we should be doing something about Syria. That's the one thing that they both have in common. Okay, so it's just methodologies that they're debating, not our actual uh, role to play. So I just want you to, you know, kind of muse on that idea and think about that and, and, and you know, decide what you think about this historic role that we uh, uh, play within uh, the, the world. Um, and so uh, here are these clips for this week. And, um, you know, again, next week it'll be more in depth. I hope that in the middle of finding the tragedy and some of the horrors of some of the clips, that you'll also enjoy them in the sense of, 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 you know, allowing yourself to be more exposed to the world and to make sense of things that maybe seem like they don't, they, they, they couldn't make sense from a limited knowledge of point of view. Uh, that's all I'll say for this. Have a good week. And again, we'll, we'll be in touch as necessary.